Thanks for joining us today. My name is John Nelson. I'm the Vice President of Operations, Marketing, and Sales at BBI International. I'm joined today with Anna Simmet. She is the editor of Biomass Magazine and Pellet Mill Magazine. Our guest today is Mark Yancey. He's the Chief Technology Officer for D3 Max. Uh, we'll, he'll be talking a little bit about sustainable aviation fuel in the panel that he's on. So without further ado, I'll well, let's just jump right into it. So Anna, if you want to kick things off here. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, hey, Mark. Uh, glad you could join us today. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I thought uh, maybe uh, we could just start today um, by you talking a little bit about your, you know, your history or your background, and then maybe kind of a high-level description of D3 Max. Sure, sure. Um, I won't go all the way back to like when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> way, way, way. In, in uh, <laughs> 1992, I, I got a job at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory working in their biofuels program. So I was exposed to uh, how do you make ethanol out of biomass uh, at Enron pretty much well, for nine years, uh, from 92 to 2001. And I managed uh, a lot of subcontracted uh, cellulosic ethanol research and development projects. Uh, I managed one uh, project with Coors where we converted spent Coors grain to ethanol in the Enrel laboratories and, uh, and so on. So that was kind of my, my introduction to ethanol. In 2001, I joined BBI International as part of the consulting group. We grew that into a, a fairly large group that helped clients uh, build ethanol plants and biodiesel plants. Uh, and during that time, we had a, a group of engineers, some from NREL, like myself. Uh, we began to develop technology to convert cellulose to ethanol. And D3 Match really came out of that uh, initial effort at BBI International back around 2007. And we mm -hmm. created D3 Match in 2015. Um, like uh, said, I'm the chief technology officer, so I'm responsible for uh, developing technologies at D3 Max. And today I'm going to talk about our newest technology, which will be the production of cellulosic ethanol from corn stover and then conversion of that ethanol to sustainable aviation fuel. Mm -hmm. Right. That actually, I think, is a perfect segue into my next question. Um, so, uh, your presentation is, is on that topic. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about this new um, venture or project? It's called Sapphire. Okay, sure. Uh, Sapphire stands for Sustainable Aviation Fuel from Renewable Ethanol. And that's just a, a, a name that uh, Mike Kimmel at NREL came up with when we were writing our proposal to the Department of Energy in their scale up FOA, which came out last mm -hmm. spring. Um, uh, D3 Max teamed up with NREL. Uh, we assembled uh, an even larger team. We actually have uh, about 14 companies on our team. We wrote a proposal, submitted it to DOE last spring. It was evaluated over the summer. And in September, we were notified that we were selected for an award for our project. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. Since September, I've been working with DOE to to get the contract in place. There's a lot of legwork has to be done before we start the work. But basically, the proposal is to design and build a 10 ton a day pilot plant to demonstrate this corn stover to uh, ethanol technology. The ethanol to SAF technology is already commercial, and our partner in the project is Lanza Jet, who will do the conversion of the ethanol to SAF at their commercial facility in Silverton, Georgia. So I'll, I'll take a it's break so and do <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's so fascinating. So cellulosic ethanol to sustainable aviation fuel. So, Mark, kind of just maybe backing up just slightly, um, you know, being in this industry for a long time, 
we've seen many struggle with commercial scale cellulosic ethanol production, which seems to be the step, which is the step obviously in your project before SAF. Why do you think there's been so much struggle? Well, I, I think there's several different reasons. Um, the mm -hmm. one that, that always jumps in my mind first uh, is uh, dilute acid pretreatment. And we, we actually, D3MAX, we use dilute acid pretreatment in our commercial technology to convert corn fiber to ethanol. And it works. Mm -hmm. uh, ACE ethanol is installed in a commercial plant. It's uh, running on in two years now. ACE will tell anybody that the D3 Max plant works very, very well. The problem is mm -hmm. when you switch to a feedstock like corn stover, the process conditions for pretreatment change drastically uh, compared to corn fiber. Corn fiber requires very mild pretreatment. Corn stover requires a more aggressive free treatment. And that causes a lot of problems. Um, you have corrosion issues, you have plugging issues, you have uh, feeding the biomass into the pretreatment reactor, you have issues with that. You have the production of fermentation inhibitors, which uh, obviously impacts the downstream fermentation. So several of the, the first generation cellulosic ethanol plants had dilute acid pretreatment, and I think they all experienced very serious problems with that part mm -hmm. of the process. Uh, the other things in my mind, that first generation of, of plants were in general all standalone cellulosic ethanol plants, and very, very expensive. Uh, in my opinion, too large for the first demonstration of a new technology like this, and therefore too expensive. Our approach in, in Project Sapphire is going to be to uh, design and build a pilot. That project will take about three years, and then our first plant will be relatively small, and it'll be co-located with an existing ethanol plant. That co-location is very important. It, it lowers the capex of the cellulosic plant. It lowers the operational cost. Uh, it's what we did with our corn fiber technology is co-located and integrated with the uh, Gen 1 plant. So we're using the exact same approach uh, for Project Sapphire. Co-location, the first commercial plant will likely be about three and a half million gallons per year of ethanol production. Um, actually, I take that back to about five million gallons a year, which would equate to about three and a half million gallons a year of SAF. So... That ethanol plant's about the same size as the current D3 Max at ACE ethanol. So start relatively small, and then we would double the size in the next plant, and then probably double the size again in the plant after that. Work our way up to a, a larger cellulosic ethanol plant, uh, and then that ethanol can be upgraded to SAF. Mark, awesome. this is John. Thanks, Mark. I, yeah, I, I got one question I kind of want to jump in and ask. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of interest on the sustainable aviation fuel side, on whether that's in ethanol, whether that's in biomass, whether that's in the biodiesel side. From your perspective, what what is driving this renewed interest? Obviously, there's a lot of opportunity with all the, you know, uh, flying that happens um you know we always just kind of think of automobiles but what from a fuel standpoint you know just that quick glance um but from your perspective what's driving it this time what's driving the, the sustainable aviation fuel market well I, I think the aviation industry knows that they they really need to be green or greener and they they're responsible for a relatively large portion of greenhouse gas emissions uh, from transportation fuels. It's, it's not huge, but it is a pretty substantial uh, number. Um, and there really is no, no way to, to make uh, aviation fuel green other than a liquid type fuel. And sustainable aviation fuel typically means a drop in fuel made from some type of, of biomass or renewable source. Uh, so we're talking about something that can be blended directly with uh, aviation fuel, 
something that has a very low greenhouse gas emission uh, and so on. You know, in working with NREL, NREL engineers estimated that the carbon intensity of the SAF from Project Sapphire would be 15. And that, that basically means the greenhouse gas emissions would be reduced by 85% over wow. the, the uh, fossil mm -hmm. aviation fuel. So that's really what's driving things. The aviation industry wants to be green. The, the demand for SAF is, is huge. The market pull is huge. What we need is production. And there, there will be a lot of production from uh, fats, oils, and greases uh, through making renewable uh, biodiesel, which will look just like aviation fuel or kerosene, basically. Uh, but that feedstock is, is somewhat limited. And to meet the needs of the U.S. and the global aviation industry, we need feedstocks that are larger than that. Uh, corn stover, which will be our first feedstock, um, could supply up to 10 billion gallons a year of, of uh, SAF. So it, it's a huge resource. It's underutilized right now. And it's just out there waiting for technology like this. And, and let me go back. I, in the, when I talked about uh, dilute acid, uh, dilute acid pretreatment, I failed to mention that our technology will use alkaline pretreatment from NREL, developed at NREL. And that's very, very key. D3 Max would not have teamed up with NREL if they didn't have that technology, if we were forced into using dilute acid or some other type of really high pressure pretreatment. The alkaline pretreatment from NREL works at atmospheric pressure, what's uh, in boiling temperature, like 90 degrees C uh, temperature. So it's very mild pretreatment, doesn't produce any fermentation inhibitors. There's no corrosion. Uh, and we shouldn't have any plugging issues. NREL has actually piloted this at uh, various scales for, for several years, and it's ready for scale up and commercialization now. Excellent. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Very interesting for uh, <clears throat> one of our sister publications, Biodiesel Magazine, in the most recent issue we ran a column from the National Business Aviation Association, and they kind of talk about their goals in terms of um, using SAF and um, drivers and investments being made in the industry. So if anyone listening wants to check that out. Um, well, let's move on to our fun and final question. Mark, I know you are very well-traveled. What would you say is the coolest place your work has ever brought you to and why? Oh boy, that's that's actually pretty easy. That would be Siebert Island in uh, Indonesia, which is an island off the uh, uh, east coast of Java. Uh, and and uh, I worked on uh, building three uh, bamboo power plants there, very small cool. power plants that produce about uh, a, a thousand kilowatts to power uh, small villages. And on that trip, I, I got to travel up uh, river via dugout canoe. Uh, mm -hmm. I left the project site once on the back of a motorcycle going through mud. And <laughs> it was just a fascinating wow. trip. I met an actual uh, uh, medicine man, the real thing, tattooed head to toe. So, wow. You know, it, this, this, this uh, business has, has taken me all over the world. It's been a, a great career, but that that by far was, was probably the one of the most exciting uh, trips. And I actually went there three three different times to that island. Plus, when you think about it on that wow. level, where you're helping people, you know, you're helping these, you're helping them generate power, which is what we're always doing. But it's just when you see it on that scale, I don't know. Sometimes it gets more yeah, personal. These are villages with about two or three hundred people in each village, three different villages on that island. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was a great project. Excellent. I was positive you were going to say Grand Forks, North Dakota. <laughs> Brought you to Grand Forks, North Dakota. Much. Only when it's very cold like today. Oh, it is cold. Oh, negative 30. Yeah, we hit <laughs> negative 30 here. So, so our listeners mm -hmm. know. Everyone's digging on me <laughs> in Grand Forks. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, well, Mark, 
Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, really looking forward to Jacksonville and the panel you're on. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it too. Uh, you know, I'll be able to drive there. Uh, that'll be very oh, unusual. Wow. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Near Tampa. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the conference and uh, uh, SAF. I think this is a great project we have, and, and uh, I, I hope we have a good turnout. And I'm sure we will with you guys uh, organizing it. But thanks for the opportunity to talk on the on the podcast. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you all. We look forward to seeing you in Jacksonville, March 14th through the 16th at the International Biomass Conference and Expo. Thank you.